the Democratic Party versus the party of Trump. The Republican Party is not on the ballot in 2024. The grand old party is dead, and that is not good for Republicans or Democrats. It is impossible to vote Republican in 2024 because the Republican Party has been replaced by an authoritarian, violent, racist movement, a fascist movement, a few political commentators, newspaper columnists, and professors have called the new movement neo-fascist or fascist. The party of Trump, since President Trump insists that whatever the problem is, he alone can fix it, perhaps we should call it the party of Trump. Section 1, Agenda 47 and Project 2025. Trump's Agenda 47. In the past, both Democrats and Republicans met in party conventions, where, after much discussion and debate, delegates drew up their party platforms democratically. Trump's platform not so for the Republicans in 2024. On November 15, 2022, Donald Trump announced his candidacy for the presidency in 2024 and dictated the platform for the party of Trump. Trump promises to expand the power of the president and eliminate the system of checks and balances. More power for the president. The system of checks and balances is the central structure of the United States Constitution. The system of checks and balances is our guardrail against tyranny. Removing checks and balances means plainly removing the Constitution. The United States Constitution is the oldest written constitution on earth, and it is the greatest political document ever struck by the hand of man. Real Republicans will not trade the Constitution for the party of Trump. Replacing Civil Servants Trump promises to remove tens of thousands of professional civil servants. Professionals who were chosen for their high scores on civil service exams. They are also professionals that were never asked about their party preferences. Their replacements will be loyal Trump supporters. If Christian nationalists have their way, they will be Christian civil magistrates. Other promises. Trump promises to invoke the Insurrection Act of 1807 and send the military into American streets to fight crime. This is an immediate and high priority for Trump soon after he takes the oath. Trump promises to order the Department of Justice to go after Trump's enemies. Let's be clear about this. Trump's planned expansion of presidential power involves the elimination of the independence of the Department of Justice. It would be completely under Trump's control. A former Chuck Grassley aide says if Trump appoints him attorney general, there will be a three-week reign of terror. Trump's unitary theory of the executive would also abolish the independence of the Federal Communications Commission, giving him complete control of the airwaves. 
Trump promises to order massive deportment of undocumented residents. Trump promises to support an America first isolationist policy. Wouldn't that abandon our free world allies and destroy NATO? Trump denies the climate crisis and will support development of fossil fuels. Trump promotes an anti-LGBTQ agenda. Trump promises to invest in a flying car industry. Trump promises to build 10 model cities on federal land and 10 cities for the homeless. Trump's term. President Trump served from 2017 to 2021. He promised time and again to deliver an infrastructure bill, but he was not able to raise five cents for one. Where does he plan to get money for 10 model cities? And next, every citizen should be aware of the Heritage Foundation and their alarming proposals for an entirely new America. Project 2025 is a 920-page presidential agenda for the next president. It is put forth by the Heritage Foundation with about 100 conservative co-sponsors. Project 2025 25. An examination of Project 2025 reveals that in his Agenda 47, Trump has already pledged to implement most of it. Project 2025 advocates for the unitary theory of the executive, or in more specific terms, that the president be given greatly expanded power at the expense of the legislative and judicial branches of our government. Project 2025 calls for the appointment of tens of thousands of new personnel in the civil service. Project 2025 advocates immediate presidential use of the military for domestic law enforcement. Would that mean a roundup of Trump's enemies? Project 2025 does direct the Department of Justice to pursue Donald Trump's enemies. Project 2025 proposes dismantling the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security. It proposes eliminating the Department of Commerce and the Department of Education and ending the independence of the Federal Communications System and the Federal Trade Commission. Project 2025 vigorously rejects abortion rights as health care and a woman's right to choose. Project 2025 minimizes the climate crisis and favors support for development of fossil fuels. Project 2025 rejects the Obamacare provision of emergency contraception. Project 2025 states that the liberal left hates families and wants to promote the deep state. Project 2025 rejects the ideas of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Project 2025 advocates criminalizing pornography. And Project 2025 advocates elimination of birth citizenship. The Heritage Foundation has betrayed its name. Project 2025 has nothing to do with our American heritage. It is a mindless master blueprint for the establishment of an American dictator. Section 2. How our ballot issues are age, mental health, presidential records, and Bidenomics and inflation. 
age is on the ballot. In this election year of 2024, Donald Trump is 77 and Joe Biden is 81. Each man can lay claim to a second term based on past records, but neither of them should be seeking a second term at this stage of their lives. Professional assessments. Medical experts have claimed that both Biden and Trump are showing signs of dementia. John Gardner, a psychologist, has a new podcast called Shrinking Trump. He promises to document Trump's dementia as it progresses. Mental health. John Gartner, Bandy X. Lee, and Lance Dodes were in the vanguard of a movement among mental health professionals called Duty to Warn. John Gartner has long been an assistant professor at Johns Hopkins University. In late April of 2017, he submitted a petition to Washington, D.C., declaring that Donald Trump was mentally ill and must be removed from the presidency. The petition had over 41,000 signatures of mental health workers and their listed degrees. Bandy X. Lee taught at the Yale School of Medicine and Yale Law School from 2003 through 2020. Dr. Lee's critique of Trump centered around his capacity for violence. Lance Dodes is a retired assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. All three mental health workers have contributed essays to a New York Times best-selling book titled The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump. 37 psychiatrists and mental health experts assess a president. Bandy X. Lee. President Biden's record includes the passage of a bipartisan infrastructure bill. We are currently rebuilding our roads, bridges, ports, airports, and improving our transit and rail systems. We are also replacing lead pipes, providing high-speed internet for every family in America, providing cancellation of some student debt, delivering cheaper and cleaner energy for Americans, and much more. President Trump's record. Trump accomplished the traditional Republican goals of deregulation and tax cuts, especially for the rich. There is also a list of repeals of Obama achievements. There is virtually no record of significant legislation, but Trump does have a record. As an adjudicated sex assailant, as an adjudicated fraudster, in New York State as a twice impeached former president and a convicted felon on 34 counts. Bidenomics and inflation. Job growth in Biden's first three years is faster than any of his four predecessors, including President Trump. Unemployment is at a historic low, and the stock market is at a historic high. How can you top that? Joe Biden created millions of high-paying jobs. It was American businesses that raised prices and caused inflation. Section 3. Our ballot issues are... A Christian Nation, the American Creed, and the Constitution. Trump's Christian nationalists say that we were originally a Christian nation and that we should be a Christian nation now. 
No, we weren't, and no, we should not be. We are a plural and diverse nation composed of all races and all religions. And here is why. The American Creed. On July 4th, 1776, American patriots published the Declaration of Independence and told the whole world that America was a place where all mankind is considered equal. Doesn't that mean that America is a safe place for all races? We also said that each individual has God-given rights to life, liberty, and an environment to pursue happiness. Isn't it true that some people find happiness as Christians, others as Jews, still others as Muslims, and hundreds of others find happiness in hundreds of other kinds of faith? On July 4th, 1776, we created a nation that embraced all races and all religions. It was and is a very special place where everyone has the freedom to choose. Should we expand the power of the executive at the expense of our legislative and judicial branches only? if we are prepared to abandon the Constitution with its checks and balances against tyranny, only if we are prepared to lose our American Bill of Rights, and only if we, the people, wish to surrender our power to an American dictator. Section 4 our ballot issues are American Democracy, Senator Lee on Democracy, and Abraham Lincoln on Democracy. And in the Declaration of Independence, we also said all legitimate government is based on the consent of the governed. If that is so, then the American nation is committed to democracy. Our true power lies in the people and their right to vote. And our rulers are all temporary servants, not kings, not dictators, but temporary servants of the sovereign people. In 2024, many Americans fear democracy. Conservative politicians engage in all varieties of voter suppression. Some Americans hate democracy and are planning to end it. Senator Lee on democracy. Senator Lee of Utah is a spokesman for the party of Trump. Mike Lee doesn't seem to support democracy. On October 8, 2020, at 2.24 a.m., he tweeted, quote, Democracy isn't the objective. Liberty, peace, and prosperity are. We want the human condition to flourish. Rank democracy can thwart that. End quote. Rank democracy? Does Senator Lee mean that democracy is rank and putrid? The Harris Pence debate. In 2020, during the Kamala Harris-Mike Pence debate for the vice presidency, which was held in Salt Lake City, Senator Lee tweeted that, quote, we are not a democracy, end quote. And he questioned the role of democracy in the United States government. Senator Lee Listen carefully to the closing words of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Section 5. 
Our ballot issues are Insurrection Day 2021, the supreme anti-fascist hero who made January 6th historic. President Trump summoned his supporters to Washington, D.C. for a rally on January 6, 2021, promising them that it would be wild. The Trump rally on January 6 ended with an attack on the U.S. Capitol. The damages included urination and defecation, 174 police officers, assaulted, offices and chambers ransacked, and stolen property, and nine people killed, and it cost $30 million for damages and new security. Christian nationalists led Christian nationalists responded to Trump by showing up for his rally a day early. They were perfectly comfortable attacking our national capital side by side with Nazis, Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, and members of QAnon, the supreme anti-fascist hero. On June 6, 1944, Eisenhower, Supreme Allied Commander in the European Theater, led 14 countries. 7,000 ships, and 133,000 men in the Normandy invasion of Europe. It was the largest assembled armada in world history. He quickly established five beachheads and a second front, ready to crush Nazi Germany. Section 6 Ballot Issues A Stolen Election Attempts to Steal Supreme Court Corruption Supreme Court Reform Eileen Cannon A Stolen Election The election of 2020 ended with Joe Biden winning the popular vote count by 7 million votes. He also won the electoral count 306 to Trump's 232. Yet, Trump claimed that Biden forces had committed fraud and stole the election. Trump challenged the election results through numerous court cases and failed to prove Fraud. He also demanded numerous recounts in battleground states. The recounts showed that it was a fair election. The following Trump aides told him he had lost the election of 2020. Attorney General Bill Barr, former campaign manager Bill Stipen, former acting deputy attorney general Richard Dohue, campaign data expert Matt Oxkowski, and counselor Kellyanne Conway. Also, Republican state election officials confirmed that Trump lost in a free and fair elections. Attempts to steal an election. Trump supporters assaulted the U.S. Capitol in an attempt to block certification of the 2020 election results. They also submitted a false list of electors to meet in the Electoral College and elect Trump. Supreme Court Corruption In the confirmation hearings for Trump appointees, to the Supreme Court, Senator Gillibrand of New York, Senator Collins of Maine, and Senator Murkowski of Alaska all said that Justices Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Barrett had affirmed that Roe v. Wade was established law. Each proposed justice left a firm impression that they would not overturn it. Representative Ted Lieu said flatly that each had lied their way through the confirmation process. Supreme Court Corruption Justice Clarence Thomas has received millions of dollars in bribes, and Justice Samuel Alito has displayed 
publicly symbols of support for the January 6th insurrection. Supreme Court Reform in 1789, Congress established a Supreme Court with six justices. Since then, Congress has changed the number on the court six times, and there is no reason that it shouldn't be changed again. Historically, the court has functioned with as few as five and as many as ten justices. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and some prominent academics have advocated expanding the court to nullify the blatant bribes and corruption that has been exposed among its majority. Eileen Cannon is a Trump-appointed federal judge for the Southern District of Florida. Just like the conservative justices, on the Supreme Court, she is an accomplished practitioner of denied justice through the tactic of delay. She is currently mishandling the important classified documents case against Donald Trump. Section 7. Our ballot issues are a woman's right to choose, effective gun control, and a free press. A woman's right to choose. Roe v. Wade was originally established as a Supreme Court decision. It could easily be reinstated as a federal law. President Biden has shouted out on the campaign trail, Give me a Democratic majority in Congress, and we will make Roe v. Wade the law of the land. All it would take is re-election of President Biden and a simple majority of Democrats in the House and the Senate. We could make Roe v. Wade the law of the land. Effective Gun Control Laws Democrats will pass effective gun control measures if voters remove congressmen who accept large campaign donations from the NRA. The free press plays a major role in American democracy. The free press is not a monolith of fake news and it is not the enemy of the people. Section 8. Our ballot issues are AOC and progressive reform. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and progressive reform. AOC fights right-wing voter suppression. She also fights for expansion of the ballot. She fights for the right of every registered citizen to vote. She will fight hard to save democracy. Count on it. Time to make Roe v. Wade federal law. Are you disgusted with justices who have denied a woman's right to choose? AOC has said... It is time to make Roe v. Wade federal law. Are you disgusted with justices who accept special favors and bribes? AOC says it is time to reform the Supreme Court. AOC knows that the U.S. is the last great nation to deny its citizens free health care. Just look at this list compiled by the World Health Organization, a list of nations who do supply free health care to all of their citizens. AOC says it is time for Medicare for all. AOC says it is time to deal with massacres in America, and it is time 
for effective gun control laws. We are all aware that in a financial crisis, our government quickly bails banks and private businesses out. AOC believes that it is time to bail students out. She has called for cancellation of all student debt. And as a follow-up measure, she is fighting for free public universities, colleges, and trade schools. For those who are convinced that this is impossible, here is a list of nations that not only offer their citizens free health care, but free public colleges as well. French schools do charge a small tuition, but the French government provides about $900 per month to students who live away from home. Scientific researchers throughout the world are telling us we are descending into environmental hell. We are descending into irrevocable environmental hell. AOC has given us the only answer for this, and that is a total commitment to the Green New Deal. AOC advocates a 70% marginal tax rate. On the face of it, that seems radical and extreme. But the moderate Republican president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, had a 90% marginal tax rate. This rate would only apply to those who made $10 million annually. And the 70% would take effect on the first dollar made after the initial 10 million. This tax structure would not only pay for AOC's agenda, it would reduce our annual deficits and the national debt dramatically. Let's summarize. I remember FDR. I was 15 years old when he died. In terms of temperament and vision, AOC is FDR incarnate. In terms of truth and honesty, personal integrity, commitment to democracy, commitment to a survival agenda, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez does not have a superior. And in the America of 2024, she does not have an equal. Section 9. Our ballot issues are two model Republicans, Dwight D. Eisenhower and Ronald Reagan. An outstanding Republican choice in 1952. There was enormous enthusiasm in the election of 1952. A war hero was the Republican candidate, and here was one of his TV ads. I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president. You like I, I like I. Everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take Ike to Washington. We don't want John, Archie, or Harry. Let's do that big job right. Just get in step with the guy that's hep. Get in step with I. You like Ike, I like Ike. Everybody likes Ike for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take Ike to Washington. We got to get where we are going. Travel day and night for president. Let's have a go the other way. We'll all go with I. You like Ike, I like Ike. Everybody likes Ike. Washington. Now is the time for all good Americans to 
come to the aid of their country. Vote for Eisenhower. In a composite of significant polls by political scientists and historians, Eisenhower is outranked by only two Republicans, Teddy Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln. Eisenhower presided over a period of peace and prosperity. Even though he gained his fame as a warrior in World War II, as president, he was able to gain a truce in Korea in six months. And for the rest of his two terms, the United States was not engaged militarily anywhere in the world. Ike's Presidential Memoirs is appropriately titled Waging Peace. Ike appoints Earl Warren, Chief Justice. It was the Warren Court that unanimously ended segregation and ordered integration with all deliberate speed. Here is a rare picture of the famous Little Rock Nine with Mayor Wagner of New York City. After the Warren Court struck down segregation, these nine black teenagers attempted to enter Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. And here is a picture of Elizabeth Eckford, one of the Little Rock Nine, receiving verbal abuse from white girls. Here is a picture of white protesters who stood in the pathway of the Little Rock Nine. Notice the sign that says, race mixing is communism. In addition, Governor Orville Faubus called out the National Guard to help him block the doorway to Central High School. In response, President Eisenhower nationalized the Arkansas National Guard and removed it from Governor Faubus' control. Next, Ike sent the 101st Airborne Paratroopers, the legendary outfit that jumped out of airplanes behind German lines on D-Day. Notice that these tough guys are spread out and standing in the doorway of Central High School. They created a safe pathway for the Little Rock Nine. And here is an integrated classroom in 1957. The Federal Highway Act of 1956. Ike signed the Federal Highway Act of 1956, the largest public works project in history. It authorized an expenditure of $25 billion, $215 billion in current money for the construction of 41,000 miles of interstate highways. NASA is founded. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the first unmanned satellite to orbit the Earth. The Eisenhower administration responded with NASA to compete with Soviet space challenges. Ike's marginal tax rate, 90%. Eisenhower operated under a marginal tax rate of 90%. Kennedy called for a tax rate of 65%. Ronald Reagan lowered it to 28%. And in 2018, it dropped to 21%. As the marginal tax rates have dropped, the national debt has soared. For example, the lack of federal revenue in the Reagan administration tripled the national debt, and the problem is worse now. AOC is currently calling for a 70% marginal tax rate. She explains that the 70% is levied on incomes over $10 million annually, and then it takes effect only after the first $10 million is earned. Very few pay this tax, but the revenue for the United States is enormous. What's on the ballot in 2024? The memory of a model 
for conservative Republicans, the late Ronald Reagan. In 1976, Ronald Reagan sought the Republican nomination for president. He lost the nomination to President Gerald Ford in the narrowest of elections. Reagan's concession speech was gracious, civil, and supportive of Ford as the nominee. Ronald Reagan won the presidency in 1980. He appointed the first woman to the Supreme Court, Sandra Day O'Connor. This splendid lady was a significant justice. Reagan's other appointments, Rehnquist, Scalia, and Kennedy, were all effective judges. It seems Reagan held powers of discernment that were totally lacking in the Republican presidents who followed him. Reagan called the Soviet Union a part of an evil empire. His firm stand against communism led to the tearing down of the Berlin Wall, the unification of all of Germany on free world terms, and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev signed the INF Treaty, eliminating a whole class of intermediate-range nuclear missiles. It was the last serious disarmament ever achieved. Ronald Reagan is a glorious model for modern conservatives. Section 10, our ballot issues are the pursuit of excellence, Martin Luther King Jr. and Four National Heroes on Mount Rushmore, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is a sound example for modern Christians. There is a good reason that Dr. King has his own very special holiday on January 15th. That is because he was a very special Christian. As a Baptist minister, he not only taught the Word, he was a doer of the Word. Like Jesus, he made the welfare of the poor his deep concern. He spoke against the Vietnam War and cruelty in America, and he made integration and voting rights his priority. He told his black followers that they were promised equality in the American Declaration of Independence and that they had been given full citizenship in the 14th Amendment and the right to vote in the 15th Amendment. Both of these were passed and ratified 100 years ago. He also told them that the Warren-led Supreme Court had recently ordered integration with all deliberate speed. Dr. King achieved equal seating on buses with his Montgomery bus boycott. He achieved many integration goals with sit-ins and other nonviolent methods. He taught his followers that when they were met with violence, never to respond with violence. Never. Dr. King won the Nobel Peace Prize. Dr. King was spat upon, hit with rocks, stabbed, jailed, and finally assassinated. Four American heroes have been memorialized on the side of Mount Rushmore. Left to right, General George Washington led the victorious American army in the War for Independence, and he served as the first American president. He could have been made king. Instead, he chose to be called president, the first president in the history 
of the world. He also established the tradition of peaceful transfer of power, a tradition that was practiced until 2021. Thomas Jefferson was America's foremost authority on the Enlightenment, and he wrote the lion's share of the Declaration of Independence. As president, he doubled the size of the United States with his Louisiana Purchase. He paid France approximately four cents per acre. Teddy Roosevelt was a Republican president who developed the Panama Canal. He also sued 45 corrupt business monopolies and dismantled many of them. In 1912, he ran as a progressive, campaigning for free universal health care for all. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican who saved the American Union and freed the slaves. In his Gettysburg Address, he said that democracy shall not perish from the earth. The thought and the work of these four heroes is very much on the ballot in 2024.